Hey, it's hammer time. Here I am in baseball heaven, home of the deep backs, Chase Field with the uh, president and CEO of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Derek Hall. Derek, thank you for being on Hammer Time. Glenn, it's good to have you. No, this is exciting. Now, now you've been in baseball one way or another for 25 years. How did you? How did? How did you do it? How did? How did you make the uh, the the move into uh, the national pastime? It's been a long road. It was something I always wanted to do. Uh, you know, it was one where growing up, loving baseball with my father, who was a really good baseball player himself, and he had a, a love for the game. I knew I wanted to be involved somehow. And you realize at some point, usually in high school, you're not as good as everyone else, and and you better just figure out a different way to get involved in the game. And uh, so, you know, went to Arizona State University undergrad, fell in love with this area, obviously, and tried to figure out a way how to get into, uh, a way to get into sports. And I figured sports broadcasting would be a nice, uh, a nice way to get in. After that, learned about a sports administration program at Ohio University. They had a direct tie with the Dodgers, which is where I grew up in LA and you know, all over the country. I, I grew up a Dodger fan. That's changed a lot. Uh, and it was always my goal to, to work for the Dodgers and eventually was able to do that. Got into the program, got my master's degree, got an internship with the Dodgers, worked my way up. And then once I was there, I couldn't wait to, to get here and ultimately it happened. Did you go to ASU? Is it true you went to ASU on a speech and debate scholarship of some sort? I did, yeah. So originally I was recruited by ASU through speech and debate and, and knew all the folks in the, in the leadership department. Neil and, and others, but uh, you know, was a devil's advocate and got involved with ASASU. Had a great time there, Greek life, also working in the athletic department, was very involved there. But I wasn't sure where I was going to go to school, and I actually had a chance uh, to go to one of the military academies, or actually two that I was deciding between, and, and decided I would go and be a part of the military academy. And at the last minute, I said, That's not for me. And, and it all, you know, it worked out. It really, it really wasn't something that, again, it was another one of those dreams of my father's. You know, he loved baseball and he loved the military and he always wanted me to be a general one day. And it's wild how now years fast forward, I love the military and I love veterans uh, and baseball. And we get to, to interweave both of those, you know, those loves, passions and interests. If there was uh, recognition for like the nicest, most engaged guy in the community, you, I, I believe you'd win it just about every year. Oh, wow. Thanks. And you know the the way you've integrated the D-backs into every aspect of the community, but but I would love for you to talk a little bit about the veterans side of things. It's been remarkable what we've done as an organization, and it really starts at the top when it comes to the community. And we just surpassed you know fifty five million dollars in giving in just our our short twenty years of existence. But military's become a, a major focus, as you can imagine, for so many of us. And it's not just because you know we we want to give back, and we realize it it should be a spotlight right now. But our players and our coaches and our front office have so much interest in, in being a part of that as well. Um, so when you have players that are engaged and when you can set aside an entire golf tournament where all those funds are raised for either veterans or families of those heroes that are at war, military organizations, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a big initiative for us. And those numbers continue to grow where, um, you know, in our, in our overall spending during the year for the community of six or seven million, it's a big chunk of it that goes to, to military and veterans also to be able to give them discounts to come to games or even you know freebies in a lot of cases and upgrades. It's very important that we get those families out here and let them know how much we appreciate all they've sacrificed. Well, you've created a great atmosphere at, 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 at the park and maybe you could talk a little bit about that. You, you've done a really good job of keeping it uh, affordable for families and you know it's 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 a competitive team. People just have a great experience when when they come out to the park. Appreciate that, Glenn. I mean, we look at five main areas of focus, and that's part of the circle of success that we created a few years back. And it's financial efficiency, it's performance on the field, it's community, it's culture, which is a big part of who we are. But then it's fan experience. And when you look at the fan experience, it's everything from the security to the ushers that take your ticket to those that pour your soda. And it's really about the treatment of all of our fans. But that overall experience has to be second to none because we know we're not going to win every game. You know you're going to lose some games. We always say try and find a way to win even when you lose so that the fans will leave here still feeling great about the experience. But you're right. It's affordability. It's cleanliness. It's safety. And for us to have family value pricing, I remember years ago I walked through our team shop 
and I realized you can't buy a jersey for under like $85 and you can't buy a cap for under $30. We needed to change that and so we did. We introduced value pricing. Then we extended that beyond out through the concourse where you see a logo now and even at the concession stands where you can get a $4.14 ounce beer, the most affordable in baseball. You can bring in your own water and food, which you don't see at most ballparks or venues, uh, where you have kids' food items for $2, soda, popcorn, milk, hot dog, corn dog. So that, that's important for us to always remain affordable. Where the, it's hard to believe, you would know this, but the lowest per capita income of all 30 teams in baseball. And when that industry was struck so poorly, as all of them were in the economy a few years ago when we took a downturn, I think we got hit the hardest next to, say, Detroit. And for us to still remain uh, at a place where people could come here and enjoy a game and get their minds off of some of the challenges and problems in life, and that's what we were, were able to do because we're still the most affordable ticket in all of baseball. Well, nothing is more important than baseball. So yes. uh, I like how you also have kept uh, some of the icons of the franchise uh, involved. Uh, Luis Gonzalez is everywhere and just wears the Diamondback uh, jersey with great, great pride. Can you maybe talk a little bit about your thinking there of keeping some of these uh, great ball players uh, involved? Absolutely. So I go back again to my Dodger days, and I, I had really good relationships with the former players, which was a lot of fun for me, too, because growing up, these were some of my, you know, my idols. So for me to be able to work with or employ people like Ron Say, Steve Garvey, Steve Yeager, to have a lifelong friendship now with Sandy Koufax, you know, I get chills every time I say it, to been able to hire Fernando Valenzuela back into the organization and work so closely with Vin Scully away from there. Those are iconic names. And when you think about the brand, you, you don't only think about, you know, Dodger Stadium or the Dodger Dog or the uniform, or you, you think also about those greats that played for that team and are still a part of that game. And they're there in spring training and influencing the young players. We needed that because now I think we've had enough of a history where we could start to bring in some of those legendary figures and players like Gonzo. And here's a guy who left. Uh, he had an option on his contract that at the time we didn't take. And I remember just how tough it was at that time, you know, PR-wise. But also, here was a guy who we cared a lot about. He cared a lot about this organization. You wish it had worked out where he could have finished his, his career here as a D-back. Yet he leaves. We, we repair. We, you know, we... we uh, convince him to come back to the organization and he's unbelievable and he'll do anything for the organization and in addition to him Randy Johnson's now here you know to have guys on the field or in the broadcast booth that have been here before Bob Brindley bringing him back at one point we brought Bob Melvin back we've had Matt Williams Mark Grace be parts of this organization Willie Bloomquist is one of our advisors as well as JJ Putz I think the more of those individuals who have been a part of this this organization in the uniform and can be a part of the organization afterwards uh, to help influence and shape our minds of what does a player think or what was important to you when you wore the uniform, but also to be role models. These were all great community guys, yes. cared about the fans, to be here and, and be an influence on our, our young players.